lives. Let's read together. I said, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. So if you are not someone who is giving thanks, you are doing a bad thing. He said it is good. The opposite of good is it is a bad thing not to give thanks unto the Lord. Because you didn't make yourself. Nobody sitting here can say, I put lungs in my lungs. I'm the one who cares for my kidney. Did you hear the story? The man was already in the mind of the devil. He has killed somebody. Took insulin. The one that kills loaded it. And somehow the angel was helping that guy, don't inject yourself. Because you will leave your body in this circle. Now, to you, it may not be testimony, but he was delivered from killing somebody. Amen. And that error can land him in jail. That he killed the man while he was on duty. When you hear we went to the shelter, two shelters, in order to care for God's children that nobody is caring for. Nobody clapped. Because as far as you're concerned, that's not testimony. Just two days ago, they arrested 80 Nigerians that have been scamming people. FBI have been watching them. They've been enjoying the money they scam from people. 80 Nigerians. $46 million they scam from people. But FBI was playing with them and allowed them to toy around until it was their roll call. It was time for them to be called. And it's publicly. 12. Of them are being hanged in Saudi Arabia on Monday for bringing cocaine to Saudi Arabia. Now, if you have your peace, to you is not testimony. That you have a place to go, you are not hearing your brother's name, your husband's name, to be executed, to be killed. One more time, raise your right hand. Say, Father, I'm eternally thankful. I don't want to commit evil. Your word says, it is a good thing to give you thanks. I am thanking you. They showed the picture of young men who left their country. They tried to come through Libya. And all of them were slaughtered in Libya. In the name of going abroad. Many, many evil. That this is not the altar to present it. Please touch your neighbor and say, if you can only be thankful to God, your future is guaranteed. That's all that it takes. If you can only be thankful to God, your future is guaranteed. You may not know how to pray. You may never be able to climb a mountain to pray, but you know how to say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. The book tells you we can go from place to place. Why do you give time for everybody to talk? It's right there. And to sing praises unto thy name. Almost high. Oh, if you don't sing to his glory, who else will you sing for? It is with joy that I say to you, the greatest key you can use to put the devil under you is when you learn to be a thankful child of God. Say, I will give thanks. No matter what the devil does to me, I will remain thankful. Amen? In the next few minutes, we'll be dedicating another car today. We thank God. Instead of death that came, disaster that came, God told it to him to have another car. He has used the other car for some time and since he didn't buy another one for himself, God allowed somebody hit him. And he was able to buy another car from there. Reverend Beringa, we will be dedicating your car. Wave your hands to the Lord. God knows how to give you good things from anything bad. It may look bad now, but it will be unto good. Every month, God tells us to read a book. And we read the book together in order to learn the lessons of life from the greatest teacher. We're concluding on Wednesday. Today is the last Sunday. And I want to show you five habits. 
needed for mega exploits. Five habits needed for mega exploits. John chapter 14 has been the book of the month. The master himself who came into this world to raise men and women of exploits. The master himself who came to do what no man could do before he came. He taught the first 12, the 70, the 120, the 500. These teachings were first taught to them. And Jesus opened his mouth in John 14, 12. If you look at this entire chapter, we have been blessed by God. To hear Jesus teach, I'm glad it was documented. They tried to dilute it, but not completely. Verse 12 of John 14. Here is where the pronouncement for the entire destiny of all God pleasers come from. He said with his own mouth, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works, I want you to remove works for a minute, put the exploits. I want you to put the exploits. I want you to read it with the word exploit. So let's read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the exploits that I do, shall he do also. And greater exploits than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Say, I'm born for exploits. I will do exploits for my master, for my creator. Now, if this is your first time joining us, it's, we're rounding up. And it will make some sense if you get to listen to the rest of the teachings. Because every Christian is born again in order to do exploits for the kingdom of God, beginning from your family. And nobody, nobody, I wish we have this outline for the leadership training that we do here for the one of today. If we do, I will want you to carry one with you because it is loaded and we cannot, we cannot afford to allow anybody live here without this material. It will help you. It will help you because there are loaded truths and scriptures. Because as a believer, if you don't carry the armor of God, you may never be able to penetrate the kingdom of darkness. Jesus came, look at Luke chapter 4, verse 18, and listed the exploits, the anointing of God on him, have empowered him to do. Christians are not the one to lament in life. Christians are not the one to be at the receiving end from Satan. Every child of God is saved in order to save another soul. And so, you don't just say I'm a Christian without doing what a Christian does. It's like saying I'm a lawyer and you don't practice. I'm a doctor and you don't practice. I'm a registered nurse and nobody knows where you walk. Can we read verse 18 together? Luke chapter 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had what? Anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Somebody say exploits. Every one of you sitting here, God, allowed you to be saved from the hands of the devil so you can do exploits. Did you hear what she said? My first son is now becoming a pastor. He's going for a three days fast. That is a mother's greatest joy. Not my first son is becoming a drug dealer. My first son is becoming a non-entity. My first son is now serving God. It didn't start that way. It began by her praying and praying and praying and praying and placing his name before God. God wants to be proud of you the way parents are proud of their children. So Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will do exploits. 
and you will do greater exploits. And to carry out those exploits, there are five habits we need. There are men who have habits of fault find. They will find fault with God. There are those who go to church who look for fault. They didn't shake my hands. They didn't greet me well. They didn't smile at me. They are out to find fault. There are those who have the habit of accusation. And the devil's ministry is to accuse people. He is the only one that started the ministry of accusation. Jesus said, I came to heal the brokenhearted. I came to restore life back to those that the devil have molested. Tap your neighbor by the shoulder and say, you are born for exploits. You are not born to look for faults of others. You are not a Christian looking for how to destroy another Christian. You are born for exploits. Number one habit is radical discipline. Jesus came into this world as God but lived a disciplined life. That's why we call his disciples disciples, the disciplined ones, the students who chose to follow the discipline of Christ. Please write this down. Without discipline, there is no destiny. Without discipline, there is no destiny. I wish we had time to speak on this because each of these five habits will take us one year to learn and study. Touch your neighbor and say, if only you can be disciplined. Destiny will be easy. If you look at discipline, the reason between two friends, one doing well, another one doing badly, is just discipline. Because God loves all of us. God likes all of us. And God wants to lift all of us. Our only problem is lack of discipline. When you see anywhere where progress is being made, you will see a lot of discipline. It's not just about the devil. There are many who have rejected the life of discipline. Discipline with my time, discipline with my money, discipline with my relationship, discipline is why the destiny of many looks bleak. You join the army. The first thing you learn in the army is discipline. They shave up your hair and tell you what and what you can't do again. They introduce you to a life of discipline to make you a better person. Help me tap your neighbor and say, all you need to put the devil to shame is radical discipline. There are those who cannot discipline their mouth. They say anything, anywhere, anyhow. They don't know discretion. Their mouth is not disciplined, so they can talk anyhow. And God can't trust them. People can't even trust you because you can open your mouth and nobody knows the next thing coming. So Jesus said, you are going to do the same exploits I need, but you need my life of discipline. If you start practicing discipline from tomorrow morning on a higher level, there are things you will achieve before the end of this year. There are miracles that will begin to take place before the end of this year. Can I hear you say, I sign my name for radical discipline. Go to the hospital and see how disciplined the doctors are. Why nurses can chat and chat, gossip doctors gossiping. They are the most quiet people you can ever meet. That's why when they say, I want to see your family, everybody brings up. Because doctors don't tell you, I want to see the family. That means they have bad news and good news. They don't jump around. You don't see them with t-shirts and jeans. You don't see doctors that way. And not a place you see discipline is in the bank. You don't enter there and everybody's chewing gum and talking and dirt everywhere. You walk into the bank, you can smell discipline. It's a place for discipline. And the hands of God is the place for the highest level of discipline. Jesus taught this man, fishermen, tax collectors. He, he was dedicated. Paul, I know, heavily raw dedication to his God. But you, who are you? 
He did not see any dedication to the will of God in their life. And the Bible said he tore seven men, one man possessed with Satan, just like we heard this morning, dealing with seven grown men. And he didn't let them go through the door. He threw them out through the windows. We say wounded and naked. What will happen if you dedicate your life to helping your family? What will happen if you dedicate your life to doing something that matters in the society? Jesus said, the works that I did, you will do. How did Jesus do it? Radical discipline. Today, people don't want to be disciplined. Discipline them. They run back to the devil. So you see homes today, the child wants to watch TV from morning till evening. They say, allow them. Mommy said, no, stop TV, go do your homework. Daddy said, no, 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 let them watch TV. And they raise children like that, who do what they like, when they like, without discipline, without dedication to study. You can see parents who don't care whether their children read books or not. Just make sure you are doing something. Dedication is what gives you distinction in life. And there are Christians that are not dedicated to their faith. They are not dedicated to their Savior. They are not dedicated to the church. They are not dedicated even to themselves. Remove dedication and destruction is by the corner. Remove dedication and life will deny you access to what you hunger to have. Remove dedication and you will soon be like one of those who see their mates and say we started together. We used to be in the same class because only dedicated people live the life of distinction. You see that tree outside there is dedicated to the ground. You don't see that tree jumping all over the place. That tree has been there for years and years and years. Tap your neighbor and say, God says, if you must do exploits, you must receive raw dedication. To God, to man, and to destiny. Can I hear you say, I receive the spirit of raw dedication. Number three, in order to do mega exploits, Jesus taught in this book that you need radical diligence. In Proverbs, Solomon who became the richest man, all through the book of Proverbs, Solomon talked on this than anybody else. Chapter 22, verse 29, this is what this man taught. All the time Solomon opens his mouth, he talked about diligence. Let's read together. It's on the screen. He said, seest thou a man? Seest thou a man? Seest thou a man? I'm waiting for the rest of you. See us down a man in his what? In his what? What shall happen to him? He shall stand before. How many of you have ever told yourself, why am I meeting only poor people? It's lack of diligence because diligence brings you to kings. And lack of diligence helps you meet poor people the rest of your life. It's like this time I open my mouth, I'm trying to meet somebody. They are always broke. They are always poor. All my friends are packages of trouble. When that happens to you, life is telling you you are not diligent enough to get out from the bottom to get to the top. There are eight major things diligence will do for you according to Solomon, but we can't cover them today, but I'll tell you one. It says, see if that a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. There is a month ahead of you. You are getting ready to meet kings if you will embrace diligence. You will no longer meet the raw, wicked people again in your life in Jesus' name. Diligence is what brings you before people like Donald Trump. Diligence. Because you can pray and not be diligent. You can fast and not be diligent. Hold your neighbor by the hand and say, if you were diligent, you wouldn't be where you are now. I'm telling you the truth. All through the pages of scripture, 
This young lady went to set another world record last week. Simone. She went into that game as a born again child of God to set another standard in that field where she has disciplined herself. Every time Serena Williams stands, not speaking in tongues, any opponent she stands to fight with. The sister has wondered, Venus, why is my sister beating all her opponents and I keep losing? And we were all winning before. Tap your neighbor and say it's diligence. Yes. Diligence. Nobody who embraces the habit of diligence will sit to talk with low people. I came to prophesy this morning that the next month ahead of you, diligence will take you to the next level in Jesus' name. Doing what it takes. Doing what it takes. Diligence is you telling yourself, I'm ready to do this no matter the cost. I refuse to. If you notice, to be great and to be poor is a matter of choice. God doesn't force it on anybody. To be a failure and to be a winner is a matter of choice. What is the choice for failures? They choose not to be disciplined. They choose not to be dedicated to nothing. They choose not to be diligent. They do it for two hours. I'm tired. I'm tired. Oh, my hands are aching me. But not to a diligent man. He knows why he's doing it. With the ache, I'm climbing the ladder from the bottom to the top. I prophesy that you will embrace these habits. You will be the first to break record in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. All through Proverbs and through the Bible, you hear Solomon talk about the life of the diligent. Do you know what it will do for you if you are diligent for the next 30 days? You can change the focus and the future of that family you belong to. If you embrace radical discipline, raw dedication, Radical diligence. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. I'm out of time because I want you 